Welcome, welcome, welcome to Sunday School on the Go. This is your host, Prophetess Denise Kelly, uh, with your host, uh, your co my co-host, uh, uh, Minister, uh, Minister Andre Kelly. We're going to start letting people in. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We're gonna uh we're gonna ask Miss Shanana to pray us in, and then we're gonna give it over to our worship leaders, uh, the Montgomerys, to start praise and worship this morning. So, Miss Shanana, can you pray us in? Dearly Father, I want to thank you for blessing us to come together again. Lord, I pray that you bless all of us financially and every way that you see possible. Lord, I ask you to bless us through this service this morning and pray that we all get a wonderful word out of our speaker. And Lord, I just pray that you bless the whole world. In your son name, Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Okay. Amen. I'm going to play a song that's, oh, I love this song. It's been, it's been on my heart and it was on my mind this morning too. So, um, and it's by uh, Israel and New Breed featuring, um, hold on, featuring Doe. Oh, okay. That's a good one. Let me know if you can hear it. Can you hear it good? Tell me, yay or nay.
But just in case you didn't get my text, uh, get together your favorite faith scripture. And we're going to read those first before we even go any further. So today is the 7th, the 24th, and the 22nd. It is the number of complete. Seven is the number of completion. 24 is actually the number of the priesthood uh, and spiritual government. And then the number 22 is the number, of course. Rufinus. Thank you. Oh, yeah. oh my man. Okay. I ain't know you waiting on us. I'm trying to find my scripture. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so today's prophecy is, it is time for us to move by the spirit in spiritual matters. We have to allow God to speak to us and to show us how, what our next move will be. The next few months are critical in hearing what God wants us to do. God is getting us ready for battle. For the next few months, I will be dropping in the group page material on spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. The enemy has been ramping up and it is time for us to be prayerful and vigilant, not just for ourselves, and our families, but for others around us and those that are connected to us in the ministry. Amen? Amen. Amen. So God is getting ready. God is, I heard God in the spirit, and I'm just going to elaborate just a moment on what I just read. God has been telling me in the spirit realm that the enemy is getting ready to do um, a, a power, he's getting ready to make mm, He's gearing up for battle. He's gearing up again for battle. He is always on his on his uh uh trying to take us out, always trying to do particular different things. Uh, but he there is getting ready to be a supernatural attack of the enemy, and we gotta get prepared. We have to begin to pray more and every now and then, you know, uh fast. Um, yeah, whether it's I know some of us are taking medication. Maybe you can fast from TV or uh, TikTok or whatever it is that uh, is your thing. And so we need to begin to fast for some things, fast from some things, and be prayerful and vigilant because the enemy is getting ready not only to attack us, but he's going to attack our families. And so we need to be ready and prepared. And I heard. Uh, God tell God reminded reminded me of how uh, people when people are off, off guard while they're not on their guard. Sometimes we can get into a place of peace, and, and we know that there's not really th anything going on. That is the number one time that we need to pray as well and give God thanks because we need to be ready. What God showed me in the spirit realm about the attack of the enemy 
It is no joke. We got to be ready. We got to be ready. In the spirit realm, I began to see wounds and cuts on people around us, close to us. Amen. Not necessary. It doesn't necessarily, it is family. Some of them are family members, but there are other people that are connected to us spiritually, co-workers, uh, other people as well. And we need to be about our, about God's business, praying for those people. Amen. Um, I just, I just feel God is getting ready to elevate us spiritually. And so I just wanted to put that out there and let you guys know that a, a battle is coming. Not these small battles that we get all up in a ray about. I'm talking about a fierce battle that's getting ready to occur. Amen. Amen. And so we need to be prayerful. We need to be prayerful. I know we get away from fasting and different things of that nature. I don't know if you do it at your church or whatever, but and it doesn't have to be no drawn out long thing. You can pass, uh, fast one day a week till noon. You can fast uh, all day. You can fast from something. Long as you sacrifice something for God in your prayer time. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to move on. I just see God saying this here. Us are going to be together as is as, as a, a in mind body and spirit to be able to stave off the enemy you guys hear me we got to come together in prayer we got to come together in prayer i'm going to leave that alone and i'm going to uh start with uh shanana as far as her favorite faith scripture my favorite faith scripture is Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Amen. I remind myself every day because I fast seven days a week from seven in the morning until eight. I mean, to 12, sometime one. A lot of people think I'd be here starving myself. I don't know how they would know my business, I guess, spiritually because, you know, we can hear. But anyway, I'm not. <clears throat> and it helps me. In fact, I done took myself off 13 medications for the last three, four, five months on my own because of that. And also about the warfare, if you don't mind, <clears throat> I'd like to elaborate a little bit more on that. I was just telling a friend of mine last week that the Holy Spirit told me this is not the end of deaths. It's going to be more deaths in 2022, but 40 years out. And it's already, we got five months left or I mean ever. My point is, is that I'm asking everyone along with you. We're going to have to not only pray and fast, but we're going to have to start doing it on other people's behalf. Not just as a family, but we're going to have to start praying for our enemies. So that's something I've been trying to do because a lot of them don't know what they're doing when they're coming after me, my vehicles or whatever. So everybody's going through something, spiritually especially. And you can tell when God is elevating you because I know for a fact about a month ago, I got pushed out this bed and I know when nobody in here with me and Scott. This dog do not have enough strength to push me out to the big king side of bed. And it was like right after I finished praying and went to sleep into a deep sleep and woke up. I said, devil, I know it's you. Had a big old nine. I showed it y'all. And I had to go to the doctor and try to explain. He said, Miss Kelly, what happened? I don't know. I don't think I know we in a spiritual warfare and he believed in God like me. So the first time he said, you know something, I know you're right, but you know, we really can't elaborate that much in the doctor's office. It's a professional thing just me and him got going on. So anyway, I'm going to release the flow back to the you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. So we're going to go with, um, I don't know if Vino Brother Vinoy was able to read the ch text this morning. So I'm going to remind everybody to get your favorite uh, faith scripture and then we're going to go with minister kelly and then to the montgomery's and then brother vanoy will close us out okay my faith one of my favorite uh faith scriptures comes from mark the 11th chapter verse 22 and it reads and jesus answered said unto them have faith in god mm -hmm. and uh i wanted to elaborate a little bit too about that warfare thing um I remember when I was a younger Christian and the pastor that married us, Bishop Thomas, uh, he's dead and gone, bless his soul now. Um, 
it was a prophet that came from from Louisiana to prophesy uh, over the church. And I remember him telling the pastor that uh, spiritual warfare was headed our way. And for the pastor um, to be in prayer and for the church to be in prayer for the pastor. And not long after that, Bishop Thomas died of a massive heart attack. And the church, uh, the church was at, at war with each other. Um, it was a stressful time during the church. But what I remember most about that is Bishop Thomas, as they was as he was as he was announcing that over the bishop, the bishop didn't move. The bishop, the bishop kept his composure. He, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't, you didn't see a you didn't see the uh fear on his face. It's like he knew who he had faith in. And I was struck by that because if somebody had to prophesize that to me in my earlier Christian days, it would have shook me up. You know what I'm saying? But now I've learned as I grew with God that I can keep the same composure as the bishop kept uh, when you start talking about spiritual warfare because warfare is nothing new to God. Warfare is something that uh, the Bible talks about on and on and on again. It tells us that, the, uh, and I'm paraphrasing, that the heavens uh, it, it is in battle. It's in force. And then it also tells us about the angel that wanted to come, but he was in spiritual warfare. Uh, he had to fight off some things before he could come and, and do the mission that God had put forth. So when we have faith in God, uh, and we know that our father is well skilled in battle, uh, he's he he he's he's a he's a tactician, he's he's masterful in what he do. Uh, he's one step ahead of the enemy. When we know those things, we don't have to be all fret and all shaken up because our faith is not in ourselves. Our faith is not in our ability, but our faith is simply in the God that we serve. Amen. And we know He's never lost a battle. So with that in mind. We can keep that forth. We can keep that in our hearts and mind that we're not shaken up by no warfare. We're not shaken up by no problems. That we're going to get through it because we're going to keep our faith in God and not we ourselves. Amen. Amen. Montgomery's? Um, mine is um, 2 Timothy 1 and 7. God has not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Um, I, I barely have to tell you guys specifically why that's one of my favorite scriptures because I talk about that a lot about fear and how um, sometimes I've done things out of fear or I've, I've been doing things even that God had told me, but I was fearful when I was doing them, but I was trying to trust God in the same um, context. So, but anyway, that's, that's all I have on that. Amen. Amen. My favorite scripture comes from John, the 14th chapter, 12 through the 14th verse. He said, truly, truly, I say unto you, he that believe on me, the works that I do, he shall do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto the Father. And then he said, uh, and whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Sorry about that. Three scriptures, but that's my faith scripture. Asking anything in my name, I will do it. I don't care what you ask. If you believe, you can reach, uh, achieve. You can have it. Amen. 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 Minister Benoit. Oh man, I got quite a few favorite ones. I I can't. I'll just bring one that comes to mind. I mean, it's just not necessarily my favorite, but it is a very good one. Okay. Um. Uh. uh I just I just I just skipped it. We'll go with this one because this is a good one. Uh, when he says for by faith. You know, uh, I think it's Paul. Let me find what the scripture it is. So I'm sorry. Uh, 
what he says for by faith. Uh, bear with me, y'all, for a second. We got time. Uh, Does Paul say that in Hebrews? Yes. Yeah, he yeah, thinks yeah, in, is it is it in Hebrews, Benoit? Uh, I'm not sure, but I, we'll go with this one because this is uh this is another one that uh, I really do. Like for we Second Corinthians five seven it says for we walk by faith and not by sight, and also uh, I think it's Romans when he says that uh, um, that just uh, he says he, that we he says that we just say live by faith, but the righteousness of God is revealed uh, faith by faith. That's what it is. For the just shall live by faith. That's the one. Um, I think that's in Romans one seventeen or I'm not sure. One seventeen. Let me look real quick. Uh, uh, anyway, it's in, it's in Romans. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. sorry, in my Bible right now. Uh, but uh, that's that's one of my favorites. Amen. I make. Okay, hopefully you're not talking because we can't hear nothing. At this no, point. I'm not talking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that is that is Romans one seventeen. Okay, amen. Says, uh, that's, uh, For in the gospel, revealed. the righteousness of God is revealed—a righteousness that is by faith, from first to last. Just as it is written, the righteous will live by faith. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. My favorite scripture, my favorite yes. faith scripture. I'm going to give you my faith scripture. The, it is Psalms 37. It's like the first, I'm not even going to read the verses, but Psalms 37, the whole thing gives me faith. The first part of that verse says, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious of the workers of iniquity. Mm. Because they will be what? Cut down. Okay, I ain't going to keep going. But that whole script, the whole chapter begins to encourage my faith. It makes me feel like I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. It makes me feel like that I have no fear, that nothing can come up against me. It makes me feel like that I can be justified by faith. It makes me feel like that I just got to believe in the word of God. Amen. <laughs> So that is that is my number one favorite favorite uh chapter in Psalms 37. Oh wow, I feel because it. many times we get caught up in looking. Mm. I see them, I see that, I see this, I see that, and our eyes deceive us. Oh, y'all getting me started this morning. Our <laughs> eyes deceive us into oh, believing a certain thing is a certain way when it's really not. It's the enemy's trick. Yes. That's why it's important to live and walk by faith. Because sometimes we can't see it in the natural. But it doesn't mean that God hasn't manifested it in our lives in the spiritual. Mm. Yes. I'm a God that kind of got to calm down so I can at least get y'all some scriptures. It sound like the scriptures mm. have already been read. Mm -hmm. Really? So I'm going to come with questions. And I don't want to get caught up in, 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 in too much because really the, this is a, kind of like an encouragement. Only believe, have faith. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what are some uh, levels of faith. I'm going to talk just a little bit about uh, what faith is. And then we're going to... Um, Thank you, Brother Benoit. Uh, we're we're going to uh, talk just a little bit about faith. Only believe. See, we, we, we talk about it, but are we doing it? Are we living it? Have we put it into action? And the reason why I say that is I, I can quote a million scriptures in the Bible, but do I believe it? Do I trust that God does what he said he's going to do? Yes. And I can be honest and say, I don't always believe exactly what he said. And it's, it's my human frailty.
loyalty that causes me to doubt. But this morning, we're going to talk about what faith is and how we can encourage ourselves to believe. And that's the reason why I had you get your scripture, because it's something that's important to you. All of the scriptures that were read and brought up were perfect. They were awesome. That's exactly where God wanted to go. So my next question to you, and we're going to start, Shanana's going to start us off. What is faith? What is it to believe? Faith is, is things that sustains to believe in, but you can't see. I can't remember the verse, but I understand what you're trying to ask. My faith, and I'm going to use just an example, is that I rode all the way to Longview with 25 pounds of air in a 40-pound tar. Didn't even know it was that low. My enemies, because I have so much faith in God, when I go out of here, I don't care if the vehicle crank up because I don't believe in a vehicle. I believe in my God. The vehicle crunk up, took me all the way to Longview, and I get there, and a man said, hey, son, look at your tie. And I'm like, what's wrong with it? You know? But anyway, just to make a long story short, I can name a few other instances. And also what I have noticed is that with faith, see, it makes you not really look at people when if it making any sense to you. So you got to understand, we're not even dealing with humans. We're dealing with principalities. Therefore, it goes back to the spiritual warfare that you're speaking of, whereas we have to stay prayed up. You should never have to tell us to fast. That is something that is required if you're spiritually inclined with him. I don't care if you own any medication. The first thing anybody should do is want to cleanse their body so they can restore their soul, which we have no power over that. We would need God in order to do that. So how do you do that? You must pray. You got to. It's a must that you put your faith in him. And a lot of people don't understand what this is. It is so rough out here to deal with enemies. And you sit there and you look at them. This is how I know I grow spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. When I was able to sit at the same table or go in the grocery store and see the enemies that I knew that was doing dirty stuff to me. I was able to let them speak to me and still stand in my presence. And then I didn't pull out that 40 Glock. I knew then God. That was him. See, because I started leaving that where it's supposed to be, in, and I started riding off faith. I knew the end God was in full control. But anyway, I ain't going to take over this because I can stand all day. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, amen. Y'all go ahead. Amen. Go ahead, Woo! Montgomery. Y'all up next. Oh, I mean, well, scripturally, <laughs> scripturally which is what um, Shana was trying to say now, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Um, that's what scripture says faith is, um, which to me, I mean, that basically says it all, that it's just believing, believing in, in his word and believing in his promises, even, and sometimes we do see evidence of things um, that God has worked in a situation, whatever the case may be. But um, right now, I feel like that's what we, we base our lives on, like our faith and belief in the word of God. So, that's amen. Not. What is this? She asked, "What is faith?" What is faith? <laughs> faith is belief in God. Uh, faith is believing when you can't see it. Faith is believing in uh, a God, regardless of what the world says. Oh. Amen. 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 Faith, amen. trust in God. Yes. Amen. Minister Benoit. Faith is uh, being thoroughly convinced within your heart that something is so. Um, uh, it's just being, it's, it's not a um, head belief. You know, it's more of a heart belief. I used to use this as an analogy. It's like uh, uh, if um, I was in a pickle, you know, and I were to call my mama to come get me. And in spite of what she may say, she, I'm not coming. You know, I would know within my heart. I would have faith in my heart that she's going to show up. Uh, and uh, the bring. Oh, you cut yourself off, Anon. You muted yourself. <laughs> he muted himself. By accident. Yeah. I'm sure. And he's still muted. He's still talking. He'll get it. Oh. 
There you go. I, I, I got a phone call. That's the oh, okay. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, it is the anchor to bring things that that is desired mm -hmm. to reality. Uh, it is the rope that pulls these things into reality. But it's but you have to be convinced. It's not it's, it's not a hit. Like I say, it's it's more of a heart convinced. Uh, being thoroughly convinced within your heart that something so. Amen. Amen. Pastor Kelly. <clears throat> uh I think I believe faith is uh like like many of you all have already said, um, is believing when things are pointing in the opposite direction. Um, just to give a prime example to, to faith, uh, if you look at the, uh, Ukrainian and Russian war, Russia has dropped over 3000 missiles, cruise missiles, all type of hypersonic missiles, uh, all different type of, uh, of missiles up on the Ukrainian people, leveling cities, leveling buildings, uh, trying to destroy the people of Ukraine. But you see a man that shows up every now and then, uh, President Zelensky, who addresses his people and he tells them not to be afraid uh, uh, to hold out our, our infantry, our army is at work. Uh, we're doing some things to liberate our country and drive the enemies out. If nobody else believes that Ukraine could stand up to Russia, you, the Ukrainians must believe that they can and he keeps saying that our will will not be broken by these missiles. We will continue to fight for what is ours. And in our personal life, that's exactly how we must look at things. No matter what the people are saying, no matter what the people are predicting, because people have predicted that Russia would overtake Ukraine in two days. Matter of fact, Putin believed that he would overtake Ukraine in two days. Here it is almost six months later, and the Ukrainian government has not yet been toppled. Now, they have set some setbacks and they've lost some battles, but they have not lost the war. And so that should be an example to us and our spiritual life. No matter what comes our way, no matter how many missiles the enemy drop down on us, no matter how many grenades and surprise attacks we hit with, we must believe that at the end of the day that our God will prevail and our cities, our households, our families will be strengthened. And no matter which way, just like with Malcolm, this, this situation with Malcolm came out the clear blue. It was like a cruise missile hit us overnight. And and, and we was taken aback and taken apart, you know. And, and sometimes you don't know what to do when you hit with something that's out of the clear blue. It stuns you. But if you can remember this much, that's a good time to pray and believe. That's yes. a good time to have faith in God. And realizing that God makes no mistakes, and that He's still yet supreme, and He's great at what He's the what He do. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. Amen. We are winding down. We have about about six minutes, uh, so I'm going to take just a few minutes to kind of throw some scriptures at you. I'm going to uh, put them in the the group page as well, but there are different levels of faith. Thank there are different types of faith. And so uh, I just want to give you the four levels that I consider to be levels of faith, or the three levels of faith that I consider to be. So I believe, of course, we know that Matthew 17 and 20 says that there's mustard seed faith that can move mountains. Then there is a radical faith. And that's that faith that Abraham showed when he was about to sacrifice Isaac. And then there's conditional faith. That's the faith where we feel like God will say, if you do this, I'm going to do this. And so we know that these are some of the faith that God gives us. There's also types of faith. There is, uh, and like I said, I'm going to put some of, this, some of these things in the chat. Each one of us, and, and I just want to leave us with this thought, and I'm not going to keep going on, but I'm going to leave you with the, this thought. We are all on different levels of faith and it's okay. It's okay. If it is time for you to move to the next level, he'll move you. He'll show you exactly what to do or he'll bring whatever normally 
tests and trials is what moves us to the different faith. Amen. And so mm -hmm. he'll bring it and you'll be able to be successful. What was uh, the last faith? The uh, uh, conditional yeah, faith. Conditional. So you got mustard seed I mean, faith. Condition. I got the other two. Radical. Conditional. Radical. And then conditional. Those are, those are my thoughts. Keep that in mind. I ain't read it no book. This is just what God shared with me. And so, and I got scriptures for it. Matthew 17 and 20 was must have seen faith. Uh, two other scriptures besides Abraham and Isaac was Micah 7 and Isaiah 40 and 31, which is that, you know, wait on the Lord and all those two scriptures. And the conditional faith is James 1 and 6. Um, then, of course, you know, there. Um, Faith is an action word. It's something that we do. It's not anything that we sit on. It is an action word. So keep that in mind as we begin. Uh, I'm going to have, who prayed us in? Sean prayed us in. So I'm going to have Minister uh, Pastor Kelly to, to pray us out. Is there any, any questions or comments? We have about three minutes. I'm just mindful of the time. I know we could talk all morning, but I know people yeah. have things they got to do. And stuff like that. So we tried. That's why we take this 40 minutes to just spend a little time talking about Jesus. Any comments? Any any other comments? Okay, well, I'm going to have Minister Kelly to pray us out. Remember to put your uh, prayer request in the chat. Or you can even put them, if, I, if, if you don't get a chance to do it in the chat, I always put them in the group uh, thing that we have. <clears throat> Amen. Oh, gracious, mm -hmm. dear Father. Lord, we just want to say thank you, Lord, for this beautiful Bible study lesson. God, thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning, Lord, and starting us on our way. Lord, we realize, Lord, just because we laid down last night, Lord, that we weren't guaranteed to get up this morning, God, but it was your grace and mercy that greeted us this morning and that allowed us to wake up and see another day to, to, to be able to praise and bless your name. Now, Father God, as we go forth throughout the week, Father God, Lord, we pray, Father God, Lord, no matter what uh, what the enemy has prepared for us, no matter uh, what uh, traps he has laid for us, Lord, that they will not be successful in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, and Lord, all these things, Lord, will be utilized to bring us closer to you. God, we just give you praise and we give you honor. Lord, we pray for each and every one that's here today, Father God. We pray a special blessing, Father God, over their lives, God. And, Lord, we pray, Father God, Lord, you send forth thy angels of protection to help guide them as well. God, we give you all the praise and we give you all the honor. In your blessed son's name, Jesus Christ, amen. And amen. 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 Just wanted to also give you, um, uh, let you be mindful. Uh, on Tuesdays, I, I fast till 12. So anybody that wants to join me in fasting and prayer till 12 on Tuesdays, uh, like I said, you don't necessarily have to fast from food. God will be with us. I believe it's time for us to get back to the basics. Brother Vinoy, you came off mute. You had something to say real quick? No, ma'am. All right. Well, I love you guys. And this is, the la this is one of the sessions for... Now, of course, remember next Sunday... There will not be a session, so because we will be out of town. Okay. So no Sunday, but we will still we still have Wednesday, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And don't forget, uh, you guys are speaking starting. Uh, I want to say who did I say starts um next? Shanana on third. Okay, Shanana starts us out. So Shanana, get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready. So this last Wednesday will be the, the last one where I'll be talking talking about we're still in 1 Samuel 13 and we'll finish off the rest of that chapter. Amen? Amen. May God, may God bless you. We love you is our prayer. Have a blessed day, everyone. Have a blessed week. You too. <clears throat>